Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, today I'm going to be going over some uh, cool tips and tricks on Emacs. Uh, today I'm going to be going through uh, being able to view different subsections of an org file in uh, kind of zoomed in and zooming out and kind of traversing an org file this way. And I'm going to go through some tips and tricks on uh, using the source block in org, org mode. So let's go ahead and go through this. I went ahead and opened an Emacs with the Q option again, uh, which means that there's no init file loaded. Um, and I think that's the way to do it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all. So when you have a file, especially like as it gets larger, when you have a an org, fi org mode file, uh, the larger it gets, the more difficult it is to traverse. So here's like my uh, regular engineering notebook that I use. And, um, you know, it, it gets kind of hairy, right? Like there's a lot of stuff that's showing up. And why don't we go ahead and just kind of queue up one of these for ourselves. Code blocks. All right, cool. So we have some code blocks. Um, you know, it, it gets it gets a little bit hairy, right? Like it gets difficult to manage. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. In the last video, I was showing you all how to convert an object to an array in JavaScript as kind of like a source block intro to org mode. Um, and I don't want to, I, I really only need to view this one section. I'm not gonna be touching the rest of the file. And these extra headings are kind of just, um, distracting. So what I can do is, and why don't I just go ahead and uh, traverse in our file. And we're going to go ahead and write the notes here. So the shortcut to uh, to zooming in to a section, I'm going to show you what all, all of that looks like, is Control X, N, S. Um, and I try to kind of remember this. I have like a Mnemonic, mnemonic device, whatever it's called, that S stands for subtree. So we're going to go ahead and view a subtree. So view subtree. Um, and then to zoom back out, it's Control N W, and that's uh, zoom out. I'm just going to put that, or widen, I usually call it. I'm going to go ahead and just put an equal sign here so I know the limit it. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and do Control X N S. And you can see that we can see the entire that heading and everything inside of it, um, you know, separately. So we're going to do Control X and W. Control X. W. No. Mm, that's what it's supposed to be. Control X and W. Oh, I'm sorry. I was scrolled down. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and add it. Let's go ahead and just do this for for. Um, uh, demo purposes, so demo purposes, uh, demo heading, um, and if you do Control N S, you'll see the subtree, and you won't see anything else. If you do Control N W, yeah, it'll just it'll show you'll keep your cursor where you're at, but it'll um, allow you to access the rest of the file. So let's go ahead and zoom in, and let's go ahead and do the same thing as before. So like last time, bracket S tab starts a new source block. Uh, you can type in the extension of the file that you're working on, and if you have a mode that handles it, it will go ahead and start getting uh, syntax highlighted. There are some options to make sure that the syntax highlighting is, uh, I think they call it native say, syntax highlighting. Um, I think this is like, kind of like this inferred syntax highlighting, like, hey, this is my best guess of how it should be written. Um, but yeah, so this is how you can do it. Uh, whoops, Control X, Control S, we wrote it. Uh, we'll do Control X and W. And we'll zoom out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just open my regular engineering notebook in the other window. And we can kind of look at some of the other things here. So we have that. We can look at code blocks. So there's some cool things you can do with code blocks. Um, I think the most important one here, so you know, we know how to zoom into different sections. We can just want to show this that it works uh, with any of these sections. Um, I can look up just a, oh, oops, uh, the management. Well, there we go, to do management. Um, I can look up the entirety of Emacs. You know, it's pretty seamless. Um, so now looking at the code blocks, uh, one thing I wanted to do is, you know, this can get hairy as, again as well. And I, I really want to just see this, whatever code is in here as its own separate buffer. I don't want to have anything around it. And if you do open it as a separate buffer, and you can see kind of here that I do have a command here for it, um, it'll open the file in a major mode. So if you have web mode, if you have the JS2, whatever package, it'll go ahead and give you all of the, the, the power of a JavaScript editor or whatever other language you're using. Um, 
just so that you can get through that file and then zoom quote unquote zoom back out and have that code be ready here so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and do control c um uh what is it single quote i guess or apostrophe so control uh, oops i did control c control c apostrophe um and we're here it's it opened up here in this other section uh as you can see it's a, it's a separate buffer and it gets kind of highlighted here so students um, and you can see that it's not opening up in the other one. Um, we'll have Jack again. Uh, you can already see that there are some changes. I don't know. Well, I don't know if you can, but I can. Um, the the indentation works way better. Um, there was no automatic indentation. Uh, you can tell that it's a tab based indentation uh, based on just the defaults. I don't have any plugins or anything working here. So we'll do full name Jack Smith, and we'll do full name. Uh, Mindy Jefferson, and we'll go ahead and uh, oh, you for a second you could see that I messed up something with the highlighting, so I can fix that. We'll go ahead and save it. The second I save it, it Control X, Control C, it'll paste it back in here, and I can still work in here. So I can go ahead and just do you know, object that values students here, and it'll work. And I wonder if I do Control C, Control C, if it'll run it. And it won't, um, because we're not in the major mode that allows you to do that. So we're going to kind of switch here. And we're going to run it. Uh, yes, evaluate. Um, there's a little prompt on the bottom that's asking me if I really want to evaluate this block. Um, I'm going to press yes. No or babble function for JS. Yep, um, that kind of makes sense. Um, I don't have uh, the JavaScript uh, org mode um, set up. I have it set up on my other Emacs and I'm going to show you all that. But I can go ahead and do this. I can do control C, you know, uh, quote and it's going to show up um, where it's supposed to. Uh, so let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and pull up my regular Emacs and you can kind of see the power of this. So this is actually my example here. So let's go ahead and open a new buffer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom in a bunch of times. Oops. Um, why is that not working? Control X. There we go. Um, and you know this is kind of how it works um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of change this a little bit and say that I also want a function that does divide function div a b return a divide by b again I don't have any plugins installed um, on here and I'm gonna go ahead and do the divide by 2 and we're gonna save this and then we can run it and you'll see that the, nu the number changes here, the result changes here. So that's kind of like a neat little thing. Um, if you want to close that other buffer, you know, it's kind of neat that you have these kind of helpers up here. It tells you you can edit it. If you want to exit, you exit with Control C. Uh, that, if you want to abort without basically saving, it's Control C, Control K. And if I do that, it just it makes it disappear. But because I press save, you know, it, uh, it already can transport the changes here. So those are some uh, quick little things that you can do with the, the source code, whatever. Uh, there are some other things that you can do, and um, that's here. I want to show you what this is. This is language completion. Uh, control C. What was it? Control C. Control. Uh, oh yeah, I have it here. So um, I don't. What if I don't know which uh, which languages are actually available to me? So when I do Control Alt I. Um, it gives me a list of completions. So let's do that again. Control Alt I. I can do. Uh, I see JS there. So that's kind of surprising. Control Alt I. Oh, it does a completion. There we go. Um, so I have that set up as a language that I can use, but I cannot run it. Um, that's kind of the big difference. The one language that you can re reliably run without any um, any. Uh, uh built in you know without without enabling something specifically is emacs lisp, lisp and i can't write emacs so i'm cool with that um what we can do real quick and i'm going to show you all what that looks like is uh enable this option in emacs and uh, again this is this is a little bit advanced feature but we're going to go to scratch pad uh, whoops. So this was one thing that I found really annoying about Emacs when I first started was all these extra buffers that I don't know what they're for. So we're gonna go ahead and do use Scratchpad. So Scratchpad is basically a place where you can um, uh, you can run Lisp, 
you know, just without, you can just run Lisp. That's what you can do here. It's like for quick, it's a scratch pad for you to kind of write uh, code in and do whatever you kind of want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and open my um, uh, Emacs thing, and we're going to go ahead and set up that language real quick. This is not something that you should be doing. Like you should be using a .emacs file, but for these purposes, let's see if we can just run it here. So we'll do require org, uh, require ob. Oh, well, uh, this is like the non-emacs written me. And let's see. So we'll just evaluate it, eval buffer. All right, that works. And we're gonna go ahead and just add this, uh, load this language. So the JavaScript support is built in. You just have to manually load it, if that makes sense. You don't have to download any new packages. You do have to have uh, Node installed on your machine. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, um, there we go. And so we'll just do eval buffer. Looks like we got to evaluate it. We'll, uh, oops. Uh, we'll switch back to our notes. Because I really, and still, we're still in this mode. <sighs> Code evaluation complete, result undefined, perfect. So now when I press Control C, Control C, with this very simple setup here, I was able to run it. And if I return the object of values, uh, we're gonna have that weird result like the last time. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Um, so we're just gonna do, actually just students at length, um, just just because it's uh, easier for me to kind of see that yes um, now the other thing you can do to make this experience even better is make sure that you don't have to confirm do that little confirm thing so we'll do conf confirm babel evaluate, evaluate nil what that does is uh, when you saw that little confirmation yes no on the bottom it'll make sure that um, it won't ask you that uh, oops I don't need to actually save this and uh, you know, let's uh, let's see if we can do the native uh, uh, fontify natively um, little thing. So it's not going to be org mode trying to guess um, eval buffer. It's not going to be org mode trying to guess how to uh, evaluate something. So we're going to do mm, what happened here? Oh. I forgot, I, I deleted that little thing here. So it'll be object at values. Uh, you don't see much of a difference here because I don't have any plugins set up, but yeah, there we go. So with just a few lines of code, uh, you know, in your .emacs file, and this again, what I like is minimal emacs uh, setup, minimal init file setup. Um, you, can you can run your JavaScript, you can run it, you can have the result returning, and you can kind of you know zoom in to this block and so it's what is it control C, you know um, uh, apostrophe and you know you're here. Um, well, thanks for watching my video. I hope I have, I'll make a lot more of these. I think this one was actually kind of fun here. Um, and good luck on using org mode. If you have any questions, post it. If you have any suggestions, things that you want to learn about, let me know in the comment section, and I'll go ahead and try to make a video about it.